Okay, so episode five, thanks for watching. While waiting for some bits to finish off the intercooler that we talked about in episode four, the boost pipes and the bracketry, uh, one kind of easier job that we've been holding back to do for if we have to wait for any specific materials is a downpipe. Obviously, that's kind of like our bread and butter work, so this should be one of the easier jobs on the car. Um, we've got a few things to think about. We've got to get the downpipe all the way over the back of the engine, down under the subframe and steering rack. Um, I've obviously got the wastegate to tie in as well. Now, we want to keep it as far away from the brake lines as possible because we don't want to heat the brake lines up. And we've got to keep it as far away from the inlet manifold as possible because we don't want to heat the, you know, uh, charge air that we've cooled down through the intercooler. We don't want to heat the inlet manifold up then. Um, we will obviously have some heat protection, probably going to have the downpipe coated or in canal wrapped or something like that. We're going to have some kind of heat shield. Not exactly sure what yet, but there'll be something. Um, so for now, we're just going to go with trying to keep it bang in the middle of both because they're both equally as important. We can always move the brake line slightly. We can always relocate this if we need, but I think we're going to be able to get away with that. And then the same with the inlet manifold. Obviously, there's you know we can fabricate heat shields to go around that. Um, I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem because yeah, we can vent some hot air out of the engine bay anyway. Um, so the first thing to think about is that we want the downpipe to be as free flowing as possible, the least amount of bends. Um, but we are going to need some kind of 90 degree bend to get down there. We've also got to get over the um, shifter in the gearbox. Obviously this comes up and moves around. So we need to make sure that we're, again, as far away from here as possible because it's a moving part gearbox is heat affected so it's kind of thinking about all these things and then the oe oil cooler heat exchanger is we're going to get rid of that anyway so we don't need to worry too much about that right so we've got this tacked up um a rough idea of what's probably going to work from what we've you know had a quick look at um holding some pieces together just got two 45 degree bends basically um and then a, uh, a 90 degree bend. So <clears throat> that fits in here. Roughly, we've got loads of shifter clearance, just as much brake pipe clearance and inlet manifold clearance. Um, it's still nice and low in the engine bay, which is what we want, because it gives us room for the wastegate tie-in. Um, so now it's a case of trying to think about, I'd rather it not be, I'd rather it not be much longer than that because if, the, if, the, if it's any longer, the joint's gonna be kind of under the car and I'd like to be able to get this off without going under the car. I'd like to be able to remove this down part. <laughs> I'd like it to be able to remove it from the top. So uh, if you've got a, a V-band, you wanna be able to get at it from in the engine bay. So if that would be kind of down here, um, if it's any lower, it's going to be really difficult to kind of undo that clamp every time. So, realistically, we don't want it much lower than that there. But we've also got to get in a flex joint here and tie that back in. And I would also like to get another flex joint in. So, this is where it starts to get a bit, a bit crammed. Um, because we want... The we want this end of the downpipe to be fixed to the block, basically, or the piece this joins to to be fixed to the block, um, and then have this piece all kind of free on that flex joint, and then the wastegate free on this flex joint. So it puts no stress on any of the the manifold or any of the weld joints of the downpipe which are going to take the most amount of abuse most amount of stress and heat vibration this is kind of even worse than a road car because it's pretty much only ever driven flat out smashed over curbs um 
you know, track car style abuse. So that's you know why you you almost have to be again over the top in terms of like engineering the kind of reliability into it. So that's like the first thing to think about really is trying to get reliability. So we do need to make sure that we can get a flex joint in. Um, so there is probably going to be room, but it is, it is going to start to get quite tight. So I think we're going to have to, before we get too much further thinking about how we're going to get it all in here with the flex joint and then the wastegate tie in, we might need to think about how we're going to attach the downpipe to the block and then the pipe work under the car. I think that's probably the next thing to think about. So we've got the kind of bellow in like where we'd like it. Um, it's a little bit close to the brake lines, but if we switch that over and jiggle it around a bit, we can get we can get the clearance back that we'd like. The only issue is that with the bellow this close to the turbo, I can't really get um, a nice merge into the downpipe from the wastegate. I could just put like a 90 degree bend in, like a really tight radius 90 degree bend, but it's never as nice. It's probably marginal whether it works as well. I mean, you would you would really want the gases from the wastegate flowing into the downpipe, at the kind of um, the shallowest angle possible. So you want them to kind of kind of merge in, and it, it's not the, the kind of gases to just naturally just merge together rather than just sticking them in at a 90 degree angle gas being forced into that tube as then gas is trying to go that way at the same time you want to keep all of that um like as as uh as shallow a merge as possible so this is like a 45 degree bend with a rough uh cope cut out of it um but we don't really have enough room to get it all in obviously we've not even got a flange in there either so um, yes, I could cut a bit more off this, um, but again, it starts to all get a little bit compromised. You start, you start cutting across the bend a bit. Um, there's just not really enough room. So your only other option really is to just go right over the top with it. Um, I'm a bit hesitant to, to do that because to start with, it just doesn't really look as nice. Um, to me, it looks like I wasn't able to fit it in here. There's no real, again, there's no real pro or con other than it's not really what I imagined. It's not really how I um, thought it would look. So um, just a case of a bit more looking at it, see if you can kind of see any other solutions. Um, we can't really move this bellow any further that way or we're not going to have enough room for a bend in the back. So obviously we need to get a, a bend in. Um, so yeah, it's it's probably going to end up uh, coming in there, which is not really a problem. Um, I just would have liked it all nice and neat like that. But yeah, so I think I'm just going to go for that. Um, so what we'll do is now we'll get this bellow tacked onto here, get it prepped up, get it tacked onto here. Um, yeah, the other the other reason for you know not not wanting to cut ourselves short on space is we also need to get an oxygen sensor in here somewhere um so you know that's likely to come out of this way or out of here um, again if we start trying to crush everything up on space just to try and um, make it look nicer it's probably not the best so yeah we'll we'll get this bellow prepped up get it tacked on and then start um, looking at a bit further down. Bellow tacked on. Um, so now we'll just put it back on. Ooh, and we can start working out um, the next bend and we'll basically come back to the uh, to the wastegate merge once we've got the downpipe location fixed um, at the correct orientation rather than trying to um, kind of aim to two outlets at the right place we'll just try and work on one at a time and we'll tie the wastegate in after this clamp is really springy so the next thing to do 
is to try and work out what angle we need. Um, I've guessed at like 80 degrees, so I've got a, an off cut. We kind of keep loads of like random bends around, things that we cut wrong or change our minds on. Got loads of that kind of stuff hanging around. We always just mark it up with what it is. It goes in a box. And then if you just want to check something quickly, rather than cutting, seeing if you're right, cutting again, seeing if you're right, we've got like a box full of bends that are basically pre-cut, which we just use to um, you know, see if something works before you go cutting a bend. So 80 degrees does look like it will be, it will be about spot on. It does look like it will be about bang on. Um, but I'm gonna put that in there all the way um, obviously we wouldn't want it to be in there all the way because it's starting to make contact with the inner lining of the bellow. It'll, you can kind of hear it rattling on it. So we want it to be, uh, you know, not, not so rattly. But I'm just going to put it all in to start with because then that squares it up basically. Um, and then we'll have a look from underneath the car, see if the angle's about right and see uh, whereabouts we're going to put this joint in. So... I've just got a piece of off-cut tube which I'm now using on the bottom of that 80 degree bend just to see if it looks like it's in the right position. It is. Um, obviously we need to work out what kind of angle we're going to swing it down at. Um, we, we're aiming for here. Uh, we want like a nice 90 degree bend here coming past the engine mount. Um, and I think we're going to bolt the bracket on basically to the, um, the kind of BCS mount, we're gonna take that bracket off because obviously we're gonna get rid of a lot of the wiring on the back of the engine. Um, so we'll, uh, bits of crap falling off it. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of uh, recommission those um, bolt points and use that to mount this section of the downpipe basically. So there's gonna be like a, a V-band flange on the top of here. That'll join onto the bottom of that bend so that it's at the top of the engine bay where we can get at it nicely um, and then this this kind of pipe will then be fixed and that's when we'll uh, we'll start the rest of the exhaust system back down the car so now that we've figured out how we're going to go about making the down pipe what it's going to look like um, to make it loads easier for me from a fabrication standpoint in terms of making a bracket that's accurate um, when you try and do something one-off like on the car um, the more flex joints you put in it, the harder it is to get it all accurate, given that we're going right over the back of the engine and then under the subframe. I'm gonna take this flex joint out for now, basically just tack a straight piece in. Then we're gonna put the V-band flange on, put our straight piece of tube on, and then when we put it all back on the car, we can make sure the straight piece of tube lines up to go under the car um, and straight down the exhaust tunnel. And once we've got all that lined up, we can make the bracket to bolt it onto the back of the engine block somewhere here with the v-band in and then once that is fixed and situated in the correct position we can take this back off again with leaving the v-band in place take that straight piece out put the flex bellow back in put it all back on and we've made it loads easier rather than hanging a straight you know a v-band and a straight piece off here what tends to happen is the flex bellow then starts to pitch down we start putting weight on it. We want to leave it in its most natural position. So that is, you know, dead straight. So by putting a, a straight piece in there for now, having planned for where that bellow is going to go, it makes fabricating the rest of the downpipe a lot easier because we can just fabricate it as one whole piece, fix it with a bracket to the back of the engine, undo the V-band, put the bellow in, and we know that when we put the bellow in, it's going to be in a really nice naturally straight position without any kind of stress already on it. So I've cut the bellow off now um, and welded in a piece of straight which is essentially the same length as the inside of the bellow. Um, we will have a little bit of leeway though because we can always um, you know move the bellow in or out we don't have to make sure that that's bang on and we can always you know cut these legs down a bit. And I've got the v-band welded on the end of here with a straight section on the end so that's what's going to go down the back of the engine bay. Um, so now it's a case of setting this position. So, you know, how that um, looks in the back of the engine bay. 
So we've got to keep away from the engine mount as much as possible. Um, and we also want to try and get it pointing as close as we can towards the center of the tunnel. That's gonna make it easier for us to then get it under the car without having to do any awkward cuts or once we know we've got the position right and we know we're going to get a 90 degree underneath the car no problem we'll stick a few more tacks on to get it all nice and solid and then we'll start working on that bracket for the back of the uh the engine block so we've now got these pieces tacked back together obviously that's where the bellow will go in when we're finished uh, we've got a straight piece of tube on so now we can put this down there figure out if we've got the angle right off of the turbo we can always tweak it a little bit um, at the flange but the more we tweak it here the more we're going to go closer to the uh, brake pipes and then that way closer to the inlet manifold so it's better that we actually adjust this angle here independently of the turbo um, but now you can start to see why we need a joint in here because once we've got a 90 degree bend on the bottom of here it would be you know pretty pretty hard work to get that up from underneath or or down from the top so we need a joint here with the bracket onto the back of the block so all this piece can be removed independently if required right so we got that roughly where we want it haven't marked this position at the top yet because uh it's likely it's going to change you know marginally with what goes on underneath the car so um, we'll not bother marking that yet but once we've nailed our position um, and we're starting to look at the bracket i'll actually mark it at the top here um, so that i can make sure that if we take it on and off the car i can always get it back on in the same place just try to you know, improve the accuracy of the fabrication process and make it a little bit easier for myself so we can now see um, we're actually not far off where we want to be um, we want to try and get this bend as close to the middle as possible again it doesn't matter if it's bang on it's you know this is one-off kind of custom fabrication so we can tweak it as we go it's not really the end of the world um, and to be honest I think we're pretty close with that exactly where it is the only thing probably should use the longer piece of tube so um, I will probably cut the tacks off that v-bend and use a longer piece of tube probably about an inch longer will be about spot on um, then we'll throw it back on the car again we'll prep this bend tack that up then we can look at making the bracket um, and then get it all fixed so we've got that whole assembly attached back onto the car now and put a longer piece of tube on there so we're now kind of looking at underneath the car and does this all line up is this all in the correct position um it's pretty close to where we'd want um if anything i'd like to swing it a bit further this way which we can still do we've still got a little bit of adjustment up there obviously we don't want to get too close to the engine mount that's that's obviously a concern and we need to make sure we've got we're as tight up underneath the car as we can um obviously this car's gonna have some kind of floor on it some kind of flat floor or something like that um so we need to make sure that it's as tight up underneath the car as possible the only thing that's slightly concerning me is we've not got as much drive shaft clearance as i would like and we can get more so i think at this point um it's okay it's certainly not um bad you know we could we could have less downpipe clearance but i think we're still at a stage where i could change the angle of that and give ourselves a little bit more which we probably uh, we'll probably uh, thank ourselves for because it'll also make making this bracket easier if it's super tight to the block it it might it it kind of makes getting any kind of bracket in there quite hard so um yeah if we at this point obviously we, we started out with an 80 degree bend at the top so if we change that for a 75 degree bend um it's probably going to bring it a lot straighter we'll give ourselves like a full inch of downpipe clearance then um 
So yeah, that's probably the next thing we'll do. We'll just change that bend angle at the top. So we've now got a bit more drive shaft clearance, which is what we were after. And we can now start looking at the, the rest of the downpipe under the car. Um, so we'll, we'll get this tacked on um, and then we can start looking at a bracket. That's basically the next thing to do. So we'll get everything in 100% the right position, exactly where we, we think we want it. Stick a load more tacks on, then we'll start working on that bracket, which is going to bolt onto the engine. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do that in the next episode. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Um, if there's anything you want to know in particular about what we're doing, put it in the comments below. Any suggestions or anything like that, stick it in the comments. And um, we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching.